This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and hey, who says that good laptops don't come in striped two-tone packages, right? That's a little bit different. This is a Lenovo ThinkBook, not ThinkPad. Uh, this is their Soho line of laptops, but this one in particular is the ThinkBook 15P. Not to be confused with the ThinkPad P15 we also have in Rev for review, which is a business mobile workstation. This one is not just Soho for small, medium businesses, home use, but particularly this is for creative types. It's a 15.6 inch laptop, as you can probably guess from the size of it. And it has Intel H series 45 watt CPUs inside, so the more powerful kind. And it's available with a full HD IPS, full sRGB display, or R4K 10-bit HDR display that's been color calibrated using X-Rite Pantone. So that's starting to sound pretty appealing. And when you hear about the price, too, you're going to be interested. We're going to look at it now. So speaking of that price, now don't be fooled by Lenovo's website. I mean, they often have great sales too, but sometimes for brand new models that come out, the price is pretty high. So they list a Core i5 with a full HD display for $1449 right now. But if you look at CDW, our configuration is available for only $1,335. And that gets you the 6-core i7 CPU Intel 10th Gen. It gets you an NVIDIA GTX card, the 1650 Ti Max Q graphics card, and that 4K wide gamut display. So that's a pretty nice laptop for the price. There must be something going on like the build quality, right? No, it's actually pretty good besides the fact that it looks kind of cool in that two-tone look with that angle on the back going on. It's an aluminum lid on it. They don't say what the bottom is. It might feel plastic, but it gets pretty cold to the touch. So I think it is aluminum as well. I, it's very rigid actually. The lid has like no flex. The keyboard deck is firm on this. So the build quality is good. In terms of aesthetics and all that sort of thing, does it look as as chic as a razor blade or an XPS 15? Maybe not. It also depends on your taste, but for this price, it looks pretty darn good. So all in all, that's pretty powerful mobile workstation stuff going on. And that NVIDIA, NVIDIA GTX card, the 1650 Ti Max Q, or the lower level has the 1650, not Ti, Max Q. And that's still a pretty performing GPU. And it is designed for creatives more than for gamers. So if you're looking for acceleration in Adobe Premiere, for example, or whatever video editing suite that you use, and Photoshop, not that Photoshop often needs as much help, honestly, from dedicated graphics these days, you've got it. And you've got a display to match that is well calibrated and the wide gamut one is sweet, but even the full HD with full sRGB coverage is good enough for people who are designing content for the web. So what about the rest of the package? We, what about RAM, SSD, all that sort of thing? So it has two RAM slots. Yes, it has upgradable RAM, which we kind of would expect for a laptop in this size range in this class of machines. So that's good. And ours comes with 16 gigs of DDR4, 29, 33 megahertz RAM. It has two slots. We have a single 16 gig module. So that means it's single channel. If you add a second one, you can go to dual channel. You get the idea there. And it has an M.2 NVMe SSD that performs pretty well. But wait, there's more. There's a second slot that's available too. So if you want to add in a second drive, say video editors, for example, who need more storage, or if you have a big photo library and you're using Adobe Lightroom, yay, it's there for you. So it's all sounding really good, right? How about the keyboard? Keyboard's not bad. I'm not in love with it, but it's not horrible either. It's fairly tactile. It has nice key return, not much travel, you know, but not abnormally low. It's backlit in white, the usual Lenovo way, FN plus spacebar turns your white backlighting on. It's fine. As you can see, it has a number pad on board. It's up to you as to whether you find that useful or not. Some people love that, some people don't. And the trackpad on it is centered under the space bar, which I appreciate. It's a little weird when it isn't for me. It's a Microsoft Precision trackpad with a Mylar sheet covering on it. It works fine. No complaints with that. You do have a fingerprint scanner on board as well. Ports aren't bad either. We have an Ethernet port, not something you can take for granted anymore, even in this size machine, which, by the way, weighs 1.9 kilograms, which is about 4.19 pounds. We have two USB-A ports on board. We have HDMI 2.0 quickly becoming the standard, so that can drive a 4K display at 60 hertz. We have a headphone jack, a full-size SD card slot, and a USB-C Gen 1 port. Now, here's the bad news. This is not supporting this USB-C port display port display out. So the only thing you can do is use the HDMI if you want to hook up an external display. And there are some caveats. That would be one of them. 
Battery life, well, next, that's another one too. So 57 watt hour battery. If that was a 13 or 14 inch Ultrabook, we'd say, hey, that's a great size battery. But for a laptop this size and this performance, that's not much of a battery. And even Lenovo's battery claims aren't that high. The Full HD obviously will get better battery life than the 4K. That's the way th things work. Uh, but mm, yeah, I'm unplugged, even though it says NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics, mostly I'm seeing about four and a half, five hours with moderate use at 200 nits of display brightness, doing some Photoshop work, some productivity stuff, some social networking, a little streaming video. If you're doing something like Adobe Premiere, expect less. So you're going to want to carry the 135 watt charger with you for doing heavy duty work with this guy. Sound on this is better than average. Again, being a media content creation and consumption sort of machine, that is something we would love to see and we actually do see or hear, literally hear. You have two, two odd stereo speakers, Harman branded and it has Dolby audio software. There's actually some bass here and it's pretty loud and it's pretty full and not grating and shrill and tinny and all that sort of thing. So as laptop speakers go, it's pretty good. All right, the undersides here, plenty of ventilation. That's a good thing. And it's a dual layer grill. I like that. So, well, too much junk doesn't get sucked up the bottom. And our speaker grills flank on the side. These are down and side firing speakers, mostly down. And to take off the bottom cover, it's Phillips head screws. They're all visible, not hard. Uh, getting it off, you're going to want to use a guitar pick or a pry tool because it's pretty tenacious. And here's the lid, the underside here. And because it has this massive plastic clip stru structure and reinforcement around the edges. So those things all, well, they grab on. And we have some copper heat shielding right here too. So here are our internals. There's our 57 watt hour battery. Not a very big battery, but hey, the speaker drivers are actually you know, on the small side. They sound surprisingly good given their size, but hey, nice. This big empty space here, that's a mysterious thing, isn't it? Well, not really. This is your second M.2 SSD slot, so you can put a half height or a full height in, or mounts for each. And also, the boot drive that we have here is a little shorty half height one under the heat goo right here. And in case you wanted to replace it with a longer one, full 2281, you could. This is the mounting there. Still a little extra space, but hmm. The RAM is under this shield right here, one of those pry off little metal ones. Helps if you have some fingernails. And there you go, two RAM slots. Again, we have a 16 gig with a single channel one 16 gig module instead of two eights. Uh, their benefit is that you don't have to throw RAM away if you want to upgrade it and get dual channel and more capacity. But the downside is a little bit lesser performance with single channel RAM out of the box. And we have two fairly large hand fans here, considering the fact that this is not a gaming laptop. That's reasonably good design there. Two heat pipes going to our CPU and GPU. Tripod, heat sinks, alas, not the one on each corner for a little bit better pressure. But then again, the, the cooling on this has been fairly adequate. You will hear the fans if you're pushing this hard, no doubt, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Let's put it that way for a machine in this power class. And performance with our six core i7 is exactly where we would expect it for this kind of machine. Again, you can get it with the core i5, which is a four core, and the eight core i7 is also available, which would be pushing the thermals a bit. And the socketed Intel Wi-Fi 6 card, it's the AX201 with Bluetooth 5.1, is right there. There's no option for 4G LTE on this model since it's not a business laptop. So that's a Lenovo ThinkBook 15P, a new model from Lenovo, and I like it a lot. The looks and the build quality are excellent. It's the display option, particularly this 4K display, very, very nice. Uh, the dedicated graphics, it's enough that if you want to do some light gaming, you can do it, or more than light gaming. Honestly, you know, it's not going to be playing Cyberpunk 2077 at high frame rates or something, but older games, less demanding games, it's definitely even a go for that. And, well... The only drawbacks I can really say are the battery life is not going to be great on this because the battery is not very big and the USB-C port is just for data only, so no display out. So that, that HDMI 2.0 port is going to be what you're working with if you need an external monitor. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.